Hello everyone. This is Dr. Anand Sinha. I am the director of pediatric surgery at Fortis Hospital, Gurgaon, in India. I deal with a lot of patients who come to us with Hirschsprung disease. This is a disease which causes constipation in young children. It's a fairly common disease which occurs in around one in five thousand children. It presents as constipation. Now, constipation itself is a very common disease. Most commonly, it is not caused by any pathological cause. It is just because of your diet. It is just because of your habits. But sometimes you may have something called as Hirschsprung disease, in which it is not related to your diet. It is not related to your habits. But it is a disease which will definitely require a surgical treatment. In Hirschsprung disease, what we face is non-passage of stool because the intestines are not able to push the stool out of the body. Now, if you imagine our body as a long tube which require which is required for passage of food from our mouth to the anus. So, if we start at our mouth. It is followed up by an esophagus, which is the food pipe. Then we go to our stomach, then the small intestine, followed by our large intestine and anus. During this passage of food, the food is chewed, digested in the stomach, in the small intestine. All the nutrients and energy is absorbed, and then whatever waste product is left is formed as stool, which is passed through the large intestine and passed out through the anus. Now you can imagine that this is a tube, but it needs the stool and the food to be pushed forward. So just like when you have a pipe, you also need a motor to push the water through it. Similarly, our body has specialized cells called as ganglion cells. These cells help to push the food and the stool forward in our intestine. These ganglion cells are formed right when the baby is within the mother's womb. It starts forming from our mouth. It goes down, progresses to our stomach, intestine, large intestine, and goes to the anus. Unfortunately, in some children, it is possible that the ganglion cells don't reach the anus, and they get arrested at some point. Say they get arrested in the large intestine, and from this point onwards, the intestine will not be able to push the stool forward. This is the basis of Hirschsprung disease. It is basically a ganglionosis or absence of ganglion cells in a particular portion of the large intestine, which causes our body the inability to pass stool, and the child will present to you as constipation, not able to pass stools. Hirschsprung disease is seen most commonly in boys compared to girls. Its severity also varies, so it depends on where your ganglion cells got arrested. If they got arrested very near to your anus, then the child will be able to pass stool, although he will be constipated, he will be bloated, he may not be able to pass stool every day, he may not grow as well as other children. So there may be a failure of growth because the child is not eating; he is constipated. But on the other hand, if the ganglion cells get arrested, Right at the beginning of the large intestine, then you get something called as a total colonic agangliosis or absence of ganglion cells in the complete large intestine. In that case, the child will not be able to pass stool even at birth, so they will present as tummy distension, or your tummy will become bigger and bigger because the stool is getting collected inside. The child will be vomiting. You will not be able to take the child back home from the nursery because. is not able to pass stools in a nutshell the severity of hirschsprung disease varies depending upon where your ganglion cells got arrested so it is classified as an ultra short segment disease where the ganglion cells were present right almost up to the anus or it can be a total colonic agangliosis as i told you where the entire large intestine does not have ganglion cells so again the age where the child will cause a problem is dependent upon how severe your disease is so if you have a very severe disease it is likely that you will pick that hirschsprung disease in the neonatal period or in the newborn period while if you have a mild disease although it is mild but 
it will lead to a late diagnosis you may be picked up at 3 years 4 years even 10 years i have seen a patient 36 years old which was not diagnosed with hashimoto's disease was treated for constipation and remained like that and finally got treatment from me at that age so a high index of suspicion is required when your constipation is not getting treated by your conventional manner conventional diet changes and laxatives so a doctor sees you sees that you have constipation the child is treated with some medicines and if the medicines are not showing a good effect then the children are usually referred to us we are pediatric surgeons we deal with all the surgical diseases in small children and hashimoto disease forms one of the core diseases that we tackle once we get a child who has constipation which is not getting treated properly we move on to the next step of establishing a diagnosis of hashimoto disease that involves firstly getting a specialized x-ray which is called as a barium enema or a contrast enema in which we put some medicine through the anus of the child which is seen on the x-ray and we see how the dye has gone into the large intestine this enema gives us a very fair idea of how the child's colon is how dilated it is means how big it has become because of collection of stool over a long period of time and that gives us some clue whether this child may have hashimoto disease or may not have hashimoto disease if we get a suspicion of the child having hashimoto disease then the next step is to get a rectal biopsy done a rectal biopsy is a procedure in which we take a very small piece from the anus or from the rectum of the child and that piece is sent for diagnosis to a pathologist he will see under the microscope and diagnose whether there are ganglion cells present in that or not biopsy is a gold standard if the biopsy says that the ganglion cells are not present the child definitely has hashimoto disease and will need further treatment if the ganglion cells are present effectively it rules out hashimoto disease means you need to change your medical management but surgery is not required for that child there are some other tests like anorectal manometry which gives us some idea about hashimoto disease or not it basically tests the pressure changes inside your rectum whenever there is stool coming into the rectum rectum is the last part of the large intestine just above the anus so when it is full of stool it starts to push the stool out from the anus now how these pressure changes are present are detected by anorectal manometry which is an outpatient test but can give us some idea about the presence or absence of hirschsprung disease now once we have established the diagnosis of hirschsprung disease the next step is to treat the child with the surgery essentially in a short single line if i tell you you have to remove the part of intestine which does not have ganglion cells and bring down the part which has ganglion cells right to the anus so if you remove the part which does not have ganglion cells that part will be out of the body and the part which can push the stool forward will come to the anus and you will be able to pass your stools normally this surgery is simple if you hear it in one go but it is a complicated surgery not complicated in sense that it has a very good success rate very commonly done but yes it does require a specialized care from a pediatric surgeon to do this surgery it can be done in various stages it can be done by various approaches it can be done by various types so i'm going to just briefly touch this and not going to the details of this various stages means sometimes if a child has presented to us say at 8 years or 9 years his large intestine is full of stool it is very big we cannot bring that large intestine down and join it to the anus because the anus is small in that case we will first have to make an opening on the tummy which is called as colostomy which lets the stool out easily once the stool is coming out the colon then collapse or the large intestine becomes smaller in size and then later on we are able to attach this normal large intestine to the anus so we have to give some time to for the intestine to collapse 
So in some cases we have to do the surgery in stages as in first stage is colostomy second stage is the surgery for the Hirschsprung disease which is in one word called as pull through surgery and sometimes we close the colostomy along with the pull through surgery then it becomes a two stage surgery sometimes we close the colostomy after we have done the pull through and it becomes a three stage surgery so it can be a two stage or a three stage surgery if we make a colostomy however if we are able to diagnose a child early then in that case we can do the surgery in one sitting without making a colostomy we can take out the large intestine which is affected and we can join the normal large intestine to the anus without forming any colostomy because their large intestines are not that dilated or not that thickened of the cause of stool so this is about the stages in which so basically we can do it in one stage two stage or three stages it does not matter you don't have to worry even if we have to make a colostomy it can be taken care of easily we will teach you that care it can be easily managed at home and it does not really make a lot of difference as far as the outcome is concerned if we choose the right patient for the right kind of approach as far as the stages are concerned so you don't need to worry even if you make or advise you to get a colostomy done now second is the way in which we do the surgery so sometimes we can do this surgery by an open surgery which is more commonly done especially if we do a colostomy in which we open up the tummy and we do the surgery the same thing can be done with laparoscopy where we do the same procedure with the help of tiny ports tiny holes in your tummy and we put our instruments through them and we try and avoid a big cut on the tummy similar to laparoscopy what we have evolved into is robotic surgery nowadays we are doing robotic surgery in small children also so in that case instead of laparoscopy we take the help of a robot which makes our job easier and improves the outcome in such children so it can be done as an open surgery it can be done as a laparoscopic surgery it can be done as a robotic surgery and if we are able to detect a child early in his life the segment is not too long we have a reasonably short segment disease of the large intestine we can even do it just through the anus so no cut on the body no holes on the body it is called as a trans anal pull through in which we just bring down the normal large intestine through the anus down and do the entire surgery afterwards you don't have any marks on your body also but it will depend whether we have detected you early and that your segment is not too long for a very long segment we can't do that through the anus but these are all the approaches that we can follow and finally i am going to name a few technical terms of the ways in which the surgery is performed it does not make a lot of difference different surgeons prefer different ways of doing it all of them have their own set of problems and own set of benefits in experienced hands you have excellent results so the outcome of hirschsprung disease is very favorable we expect 99% of our patients to do well without any major complication or morbidity throughout their life the names of these surgeries are sowe's pull through swenson's pull through duhamel's pull through these are the major ones which mostly people do and any one of them is okay i am not going into the details of how these surgeries are done but your surgeon whomsoever you meet can prescribe you any of these it's perfectly all right all of them have very similar success rates typically when you undergo a surgery for hirschsprung disease or a pull through surgery you will be admitted in the hospital anywhere between 3 days to 7 days depending upon again the age of the child and the length of the intestine which is involved in the hirschsprung disease it is a major surgery but we don't expect untoward outcomes we expect that all the children will do well in the post operative period and eventually will be rid of all the constipation that they had before the surgery one important thing to remember is that hirschsprung disease is sometimes associated with severe life threatening enterocolitis which means infection of the intestines and that can be really serious so in such children a high index of suspicion is important when they have loose stools fever 
their blood pressure drops they have vomiting their tummy is distended we have to think of this hirschsprung associated enterocolitis once these are treated with antibiotics then we can perform the surgery after the surgery the risk of these infections significantly get reduced and the children do well having said all this i will just summarize hirschsprung disease is a surgical disease is a surgical condition in children which leads to constipation it needs to be detected in children especially in whom constipation was not cured properly with the best of medical management varium enema enorectal manometry and rectal biopsy are the three important tests which tell us whether this disease is present in the child or not once the disease is confirmed the next step is a surgery which can be done in one two or three stages can be done through the anus as a transanal procedure laparoscopically robotically or as an open surgery any of the three surgeries which i mentioned is good enough and post surgery we expect a very good recovery in these children the outcome is especially very good now the center where i sit that is fortis gurgaon in india i get a lot of patients from abroad who come with already operated cases of hirschsprung disease they have undergone five surgeries six surgeries seven surgeries it is painful to see that they have undergone so much of hardships already they land up with a lot of complications if the surgery especially is not done properly sometimes the large intestine which is pulled is not normal sometimes the surgery site becomes narrow sometimes it completely gets blocked so these cases are a little difficult but with our experience with the large number of cases that we have already performed with hirschsprung disease we are able to manage these cases too we have to do a redo surgeries in such cases but eventually we are able to give a good outcome in these children too so if your child is detected a hirschsprung disease my advice will be to not panic we have a very good surgical care program running for these kind of children and we assure you that the children will be completely cured of all the problems they were facing then thank you